Hi guys, Snow Racing here, back with a brand new video, and today we'll be talking about Vettel, Alonso, and Fiat, the um, explosion of the F1 silly season that, of course, just occurred on Saturday morning between, I think it was actually before EP3 for the Japanese Grand Prix. So, major news, and today we've got three people to be talking about it, and I'll let them introduce themselves, starting with Tom. Hey guys, it's Tom F7 here, Mr. Techno Tom. The next person yeah. can talk if they want. Wilkes. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm Joe, uh, A in the UK, also known as, and uh, yeah, good to be here, and uh, hopefully we can talk some silly F1 stuff. <laughs> next person, please. Uh, hi, I'm Niran, and uh, my channel is Flying Orangutan, and I actually didn't realise I had my microphone on mute, so I apologise for that. Not <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is good stuff. Anyway, um, so of course, this um, was Saturday morning, it's this morning, we're actually recording it on a Saturday. And what was your guys' first reaction then when you heard that Sebastian Vessel was leaving Red Bull? Start with Tom. Um, obvious, maybe. I wasn't surprised. I don't think it was that surprising. I just thought... It would probably have been next season, so 2016, when or 2015, he'd announced that he was moving for 2016. But I don't know. I just think uh, I think everyone was waiting for Alonso to sort of play his part in the market, and uh, I guess Vettel's jumped the gun. And uh, I think Alonso's now outsmarted himself because I don't think he actually has a drive yet for this season. But I think it's pretty clear that he'll probably be going to McLaren. And it might be announced pretty soon, but that's my opinion. Yeah, apparently the same people who um, announced he was going to McLaren saying it's going to be confirmed next week, apparently after the Russian Grand Prix. So uh, I'll see that, how that happens. Niran, what are your thoughts? Um, I'm not surprised that he's going to Ferrari. Obviously, he had that contract in place that allowed him to go to Ferrari when he left Red Bull, I think, anyway. But... um. I was I was sort of shocked when I when I, when I woke up and looked at Twitter <clears throat> and it said um and it said he was going to Ferrari um I didn't expect Fernando Alonso to stay there so going to McLaren I suppose isn't a shock although it hasn't been it hasn't been announced yet but yeah it did it did shock me a little bit to be honest with you um after all that happened at Red Bull sort of one bad season and then suddenly he's off I suppose it isn't it isn't as as simple as that but yeah it did it did surprise me a little bit at the timing. Anyway, yeah. So obviously you mentioned a bit about obviously Vettel, obviously why he's moving. But why do you actually think he did move then? Was it because he was being beaten by Ricardo this season, or was yeah. it because he'd already got his sights set on Ferrari at the end of last season? Um, I think it's probably quite a combination of the two. Sebastian Vettel isn't certainly isn't used to being beaten on a regular basis, especially by his teammates. So that was probably a wake up call for him when Ricardo just came in and suddenly started beating him pretty regularly. Um, and yeah, I think he just wanted a new challenge. So I, I suppose I can understand that, but it did the timing, as I say, the timing did just shock me a little bit. Yeah, and uh, Joe, your your thoughts? Uh, yeah, well, I didn't actually find out about it till well, I, I, I got up this morning, watched qualifying, and uh, watched the whole of qualifying, and uh, then went back to sleep and woke up again, and then I found out uh, what had <laughs> happened. So uh, I don't know how the hell I'd missed it. Yeah, but on uh, mute. Uh, I, I really wasn't awake, I've got to say. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, I, I was. I wasn't really. I, I was quite surprised when I saw it, just because you know it happened so quickly. I think there had been, you know, you've always got the Vettel to Ferrari rumours. You've had that for a couple of years now, but there'd been nothing like from from Horner or from anyone. You know, nobody had really questioned them about it. Whereas when Hamilton went to Mercedes, there was quite a lot of talk about him going there before the, the move actually happened. So I think with such a big driver moving, it was quite a shock that it happened so quickly. But I think he was always going to move at, at some point anyway. Yeah, so um, Tom, do you think mm. the Vettel, what was the best option then? to If he could have stayed at Red Bull, do you think he should have stayed for another year? Or do you think somewhere like Ferrari or even McLaren was a better option for 2015? I don't think he should have stayed. I mean, you look at... I, I don't like Red Bull's philosophy. I don't like it that they, they only seem to have drivers who are below the age of 20 in their cars or something. It's ridiculous. Like, the Toro Rosso team, for example. And then, like, you know, Jev, he's been kicked out of Toro Rosso, even though he's clearly 
a better driver than Kvyat, in my opinion. And yeah. Kvyat's got the drive for Red Bull. And Red Bull, they don't seem to be a team who really hang on to drivers who, you know, are getting on in their career. And I don't think Alonso, I mean, you know, now in hindsight, I don't think Alonso is ever really going to get a Red Bull drive because they always seem to want the youngsters. Well, he's 15 years too old. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. So it's, I don't know. I think uh, I'm not, I'm not impressed by Red Bull's decision to bring Kvyat uh, into that seat. I think um, there are a lot of drivers out there in other teams uh, who are definitely capable of that drive. Hulkenberg, Perez, maybe. I don't know, but I don't know. Yeah, that's I the think problem. Jeff, yeah. I think Jeff, honestly. He I'd like to have seen Jeff. That'd have been good, wasn't it? The, uh, of course, 2012 and 2013 lineup. Mm. Good to see that back again with Vern and uh, Ricardo. I wonder who, because um, of course it could have been very interesting to see who would have come out on top of that battle, of course, this year, because they were so close at Toro Rosso. It's true. I mean. You know, Ricardo's always been faster in qualifying, but Jeff's been there in the race, and I think he actually did um, uh, beat uh, Ricciardo uh, quite a few times when they were teammates. I do believe. I don't think points. Yeah, he wise. I think on points. Yeah. Oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, so there yeah. you go. So yeah, yeah. 20, 2012, uh, the points were. Uh, Vern had 16 and Ricardo had 10, so he nearly got double the points that season. And um, Ricardo didn't get anything higher than ninth, whereas Jeff got four or eighth places. So I think really Vern deserves that drive. Better than him. That I think season. everyone agrees as well. I think this, the basically probably 80% of the community probably wanted him to take a Red Bull drive because that could have been such a good turnaround. I think for him after being you know dumped by Toro Rosso for them to kind of have a future plan for him of doing that yeah. because like you mentioned Fiat's had one year of F1 experience and really you know he's been beaten by Vern and honestly I haven't seen that much of it has really impressed me unlike Vern where I think um, I can't remember I think it could have been Canada 2013 or 2012 where there was just a really good performance from him but yeah, made me think 2013 yeah, yeah. But there's kind of been not many standout performances from Fiat I mean that's been a few good overtakes, but I think nothing to the standard of what we saw from Ricardo and Vern at 2012 and 2013. Vern yeah, like, 20, deserves 2012 that seat. 2012 and 2013. Uh, tw- 2012 and 2013, if you put those together, Vern outscored Ricardo by one point overall. Yeah, that says it all, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, so, anyway, we'll move on. And then also, of course, Fiat's leaving to go to the Red Bull team, which leaves someone to partner Max Verstappen, of course. Um, who do you think Apple's going to be? Could it be De Costa, Sainz, maybe Alex Lynn, because they're the current GP3 leader? I think they're probably the only three options. That literally, I would I would probably, I would give it to De Costa, Felix De Costa, because he's just been shunted out of it every single time. Like last year, I think he probably should have got to drive instead of Kvyat, to be honest. Um, and I think he probably deserves it a lot more this time, even though he's a Sainz Jr. winning the World Series by Renault. Yeah, he's running the uh, 3.5. Lynn's yeah. leading the GP3, and then De Costa's stuck in DTM in Formula E, not doing yeah. very well, and his got, stock is really lowering. Yeah, they've got a lot of choice, but yeah, I think maybe maybe based on current form, give it to Science Junior, but overall, in terms of their career, I'd say De Costa probably deserves it, even if he's been a bit dumped recently, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, I've heard this 15-year-old who could get a seat. <laughs> I mean, no one saw this. I definitely didn't see Verstappen coming at the start of the year. So. I can't believe Verstappen. You know, I think he's like ten days younger than me, which is yeah, it's absolutely it's ridiculous crazy. thing. Yeah. And the fact it's that he was driving this weekend as well. It was like a couple of days after his seventeenth birthday, and <laughs> <It's a good laughs> yeah, <present. laughs> I mean, he, was, he was pretty quick in in practice, but I still I know I just no. There's not enough like evidence to show that he's done like that well. I mean, he's second in the Formula Three, I think. Yeah. Formula Three Euro Series, but I don't know. No, I probably wouldn't have given it to him just yet. Even if he is promising for the future, it's just like. Keep I mean, it, Jeff, yeah. keep Jeff. Hashtag keep Jeff. <laughs> you look at this situation. You got Fiat and Ricardo. I mean, where are they going to go really in the next few years? That's going to kind of like, you know, stale. Probably a bit yeah. of stalemate, a bit of a logjam, unless Fiat does really bad. And that has to get kicked out. But Ricardo is probably not going to go anywhere because he'll be happy there. He's kind of could be the new kind of vessel where they kind of build a team around him. But I'm yeah, sorry. it's going to be tough. Deserves that. Mm. Even for Strappen, because 
think about it. He's what seventeen now, so in three years' time, you know, obviously he'll be twenty. So it depends when he could move up. Probably old enough to have like five seasons at Red Bull at, with their philosophy. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, yeah, we talked a lot about Red Bull then and Vettel and Fiat. Should we talk about a bit of Alonso then? Where do you think he'll be going then? Obviously, it's pretty sure he's going to go to McLaren, but is there any chance going to a different team or taking a year out of the sport? I don't know. Tom? I don't know. I think, uh, I think Alonso thought he had it under control of the market, but now he doesn't. And I don't think he actually has a drive confirmed yet. I think he's close. I think he's got a few options. I think, um, uh, I mean, I would say Williams, but there's no way their drivers are changing. But I think McLaren's his best option. I don't think... I mean, has has he actually left Ferrari, officially? You know, well, yeah, he has. Um, the, the, no, technically not. There are, there are rumours that they've terminated his contract, I think. If it, I mean, uh, what if Vettel was going to McLaren alongside Alonso? I don't see that. <laughs> Magnussen to Ferrari or something. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, and of course, um, if, pretty sure Alonso is moving to McLaren then. Will it be Magnussen on the way out or will it be Button? I think Button. it'll be Button, to be honest. Definitely. I mean, yeah. they've had Magnussen for one season. I mean, I know they did it with Perez last year, but I just... He wasn't a I think Button, driver. Button, yeah, and Magnussen has sort of come through the system, whereas they just sort of pinched Perez from, from Ferrari, the Ferrari Academy. And then, yeah. you know, they've got Magnussen coming through and he's one of their drivers, you know, they've paid for him to, to come up through their academy. I, I just don't think they get rid of him after one season, whereas they've had Button since 2010. He's, he's not going to, you know, he's not going to get any better, but it's sort of like a Mark Webber situation in a way. I think he's, he's past his peak and... I just I can't see them getting rid of Magnussen after the after doing the same to, to Perez last season. I just think it'd be too probably too expensive for him as well. Yeah, yeah it's certainly been an issue for them. I suppose their reputation of um, choosing drivers will be put into question. But um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this video. Um, if any of you want to add anything now, or have you or has everyone finished? I've got nothing to add. I, I want to know what's going to happen to Bianchi. Stay I say rich. Toro Rosso seat, Bianchi Toro Rosso seat. That's no. <laughs> Oh, that would be brilliant. Pass. <laughs> right now, Bianchi and sorted. Formula Rossa, no one's mentioning them. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, and one last four, Ericsson's going to Mercedes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. All of everybody who's been on the show today, their channel links will be in the description below. Thank you all so much for coming on, and goodbye. Peace. All right. Goodbye.